So we'll start talking about uh, oxides. We have 12 new colors of distress oxide. Uh, I've already shown them on Facebook Live. But the cool thing about the oxides, of course, the ever-changing palette of distress. You know, you think we don't need any more. We always need more. In a 60 color palette, right now in oxide, we're now up to 36. So we're just over halfway through our palette. But there's some really good introductions. We have Tattered Rose, that's one of the 12 new colors. You can see it's a much softer pink than, you know, the the individual colors when we have Worn Lipstick and Pick Raspberry, but that Tattered Rose is really, really nice. In our world of reds, I'm so excited about this, uh, we have Aged Mahogany, right? Aged Mahogany is that dip, deep, deep, dark red that almost has kind of a burgundy uh, tone to it, but has a really great deep color. This is one of the first colors I asked for and got it by the third release, so I know how the things work. I know if I asked Midway, it would have been the last color. So, because it is the hardest color for a Ranger to do, it really is. Because it is so rich in dye in order to get that saturation of red, but in order to also get it to oxidize, so good. Then in the orange world, of course, obviously Spice Marmalade has a lot of that yellow, but now with Carved Pumpkin, you have that true, true orange. For yellows, right, we had Wild Honey, we had Fossilized Amber, we have Squeezed Lemonade. So as I introduce these 12, because it's 12 at a time, there's a purpose to that. You know, I can just kind of look and go, what is, what needs to be filled in at that time? Obviously we will need all of the colors. It's just who we are, but eventually they will get there. Then in our greens, you know, with uh, bundled sage, we had evergreen, evergreen bow, which is that cool kind of bluish green. Uh, forest moss, which is that new dark green. Very, very cool. People can start to work with it. In the blues, mermaid lagoon. Right, so there's just a lot of great fun colors. We've shaded lilac in the purple family. You know, we had seedless preserves and wilted violet, but that, of course, is a must have. Then in my worlds of brown, once I had frayed burlap, I'll be honest, I was pretty happy. That's my <laughs> ultimate favorite. Frayed burlap is my favorite oxide ever because it just oxidizes weird. It's the only one I found, it just like turns green or something, but that's, that's my happy color right there in oxide. Um, but we Which added color is that? this one's frayed burlap. So this is that almost very light brown, mm -hmm. but it just does crazy with oxide, it really does. Uh, then in the browns, gathered twigs, because of course uh, we have vintage photo and walnut stain, but having that kind of true brown is really good. And then of course we have hickory smoke, which is so nice for stone effects or backgrounds if you're doing stormy skies, or I just love the whole concrete look. So those are the new colors, and I'll talk a little bit about oxide and the properties of it, and then go in more of the tools. So just so you understand uh, oxide, I mean, Distress Oxides, we released Distress Oxides last year and we've continued to introduce them uh, throughout the year. I have been told that we will finish the palette this year, so that is very exciting. So all 60 colors will be released by the end of the year because I think we're pretty much tired of waiting because we want to be able to pick and choose our colors. Blueprint Sketch, that's another new one. I'll show you that in the swatch book where that color is. Blueprint Sketch really uh, an interesting color in distress to me because it has kind of that periwinkle property. You can see it is more of a deep violet or it could have that blue undertone. And that's what I love about Blueprint Sketch. It's good. But the big difference, and I'll just take, uh, I'll take Mermaid Lagoon because it's closest. So this is Distress Ink, right? That's going to be our translucent dye. This is an oxide. An oxide, of course, is a fusion of dye and pigment. So you'll see right away that we have more opacity with this color. It's very creamy. They're both going to be reactive with water. The dye ink, of course, is just going to wick. The oxide is also going to wick, but then it will also oxidize. So when this dries, it will start to create this white kind of haze over the top of it. That's what it's actually doing. It's oxidizing over the top. And the thing with oxide is every time it gets wet, it will oxidize more, right? So it's not like once you do it, it's done. You can keep adding it and keep adding it and it will continue to oxidize. And every time you get it wet, it will oxidize even more. So if you like this look, the more water you add, kind of the crustier it starts to get over the top. If you don't want it to oxidize, don't wet it. Then it's a, just an awesome pigment ink that has those great dye properties, rich colors, which means we can also add it on dark paper. So something like Craft, right? So Craft with a color, like with a dye, it's really going to be impacted. That bright blue is impacted by that brown tag, but with an oxide, because we have that pigment in it, we're still getting the true color. Right. So it's another thing to understand about oxide is your surface could now be really anything you want. Craft, black cardstock, anything, and of course they're still going to react on both. <laughs> this is going to obviously show more of the oxidation because we already have that dark foundation. You can let it air dry or use a heat tool. So heat is not making it oxidize, the water did. 
heat is just making me not stare at the sheet of paper for five minutes. This is already too long for me. I'll have you know. Yeah. That's what I like about living in Arizona. My dry times are much quicker. Yeah. So you can see just on that first layer how that top oxidized. We got that great little cool kind of, it's almost like a chalky film. People think, oh, it's chalky. Hi, Jen Shirkus. Um, but it's not really, it's not a chalk at all. Like you'd feel it and you think, oh, this is going to come, this is going to rub off every time I touch it. It's not, it's, it's oxidized. But you can do some cool stuff with oxides when we change the surface. And that's what I want to share because this was kind of the intro last year. A lot of people have seen the demo. It's like, well, what else can we do with it? There's always something else we could do with it. All right. So I started playing around with oxides and I loved working with paper and I'm that person when I say, what if, or I wonder if I'm doing it. That's how I know how flammable alcohol inks are. That's how I know the resist spray sticks to your computer because I just do it and then I think about it later like what went wrong. So in this case, I thought, well, here's what I'm doing with oxides, but what if I just change my surface, right? I'm really comfortable uh, with this. I just love it. Can you excuse me for one minute? I hate to just do your video, but I must. heart starts beating out of my chest when I see someone I'm like if I don't I'm gonna be distracted go. I'll be distracted for the rest of the video I apologize here we go I had to say hi to you. all right you know that moment when you see that person you're like if I don't do something like my train of thought is gone all right so we'll talk surface so we understand on a paper surface right we got that we see what it does what if we change up our surface to something that's not necessarily anticipated for distressing. This is alcohol ink cardstock. This is a glossy paper. Glossy on one side, matte on the other. And this glossy paper is very interesting because although it's very shiny, right? We use it with alcohol inks and archivals. It does something crazy with oxide. And that is because there's a dye and a pigment in there. And this paper kind of likes it, but it's not really sure if it wants to stay together. So let's show you how we can do a background with oxide on alcohol ink cardstock, not to be confused with Yupo. Okay, this is not Yupo. Yupo is this, this is that plastic paper. This is alcohol ink cardstock. And I say that because I think in our paper craft world, we hear the term glossy paper and everybody has their own interpretation of what they think glossy paper is. They're like, oh, I have glossy paper, it's shiny. Oh, I have photo paper, I have what? Not all glossies created equal. Doesn't mean that what you have may not work, it might, but I'm just saying that most glossy photo papers are so emulsion based that they get very sticky when they get wet. This is a clay based paper and because of that, that's what's gonna do this cool technique. So I'm going to take my oxides and I'm just going to apply them to a non-stick surface. You can apply these uh, to your craft sheet, to glass, to anything. Just get some ink on there. And you can work one layer at a time in other words, I like to put a lot of colors down at once. Some people are not very comfortable with that. Some people would rather start with, you know, maybe their warm colors and do a print and add cool. Whatever works for you, really. There's no right or wrong way to get ink down, but I prefer to not overthink the ink. Just get something down there. Because in the world of mixed media, you're only as good as your next layer, right? You don't like the way something looks, put something over it. And then it becomes your own kind of work. So here I'm gonna spray this with some water. You can see right away that's oxidizing on the surface and I'm going glossy side down, okay? The key to working with glossy cardstock is working on the glossy side of the cardstock. You're welcome. All right, now I'm going to go in and dry my first layer. A couple tips when it comes to working with any kind of wet media, whether that's ink or paint. Wet on wet blends, wet on dry layers. So if your background is wet and you keep going wet and wet and wet and wet, it's all going to blend together to not be so pretty. But if you dry it, next thing is going to layer over the top of it. And that's how you keep from making mud every single time you try to play with your inks. And that means once you look at it, that's it. You're done. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit, right? So if you peek, you're done. You can't go back in and double dip, not until you dry that layer. So I just tell somebody, they're like, well, how do I know? I'm like, look, oh, now you're committed, try it. Then you can go back in, because here I have nothing. So I would sit there and go, oh, I'm gonna go back in there. And then when I touch that green into that orange, green and orange make brown, yeah. But right now when I go in, green is gonna be on orange and I'll have green and orange. So I'm just gonna go in and dry it. Now, I see that I wanna kind of pump, pump up my colors a little bit here. So I'm gonna take a little bit of brighter colors and 
that is what's nice about working on a larger surface is you do have the ability to kind of allow your palette to expand, so to speak, and, and grow some of those colors out. Just gonna add a little bit of water out there. Let's go back in and do some more prints. So here I'll do a little bit of that, a little bit of that, and let's go down in here. All right, it's getting there. Just gonna dry each layer. And I love the fact that as you see, because I added water to the oxide, you see what's happening is that as it's drying, it's really oxidizing. It, it starts out looking really intense, but as it dries, it's kind of getting almost cloudy, kind of fuzzy a little bit. And that's because of the clay-based paper. This is soaking into that paper. So I'm gonna go back in, add a few drips, and we'll go, well, how many layers do you do? So you're done. No answer, right? You might do two layers and be like, look at me, that is exactly what I wanted, and that's perfect. So there's really no kind of magical number in there. But I will tell you a couple of things that I'm looking at when I'm doing this. I'm looking at this background that I definitely want some big fluid patches, you can see that. But then these little tiny speckles, I like that. So I want more of those. So I'm gonna look on my craft sheet where I don't have a puddle, I have these, right? Those little dots are gonna transfer as little dots, right? If I go into that big mass, it's gonna be that big mass. So see those little dots? That's how you get them. What you see is what you get. So if you're going into a puddle expecting little dots, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Only in your dreams. You think, oh, I'm gonna go in. All right, let's do one more print because I wanna throw in some, some kind of impressive blue and you think, gosh, when is he gonna stop? Well, you stop when you stop, I'm done. All right, let's get rid of this. And we're gonna dry this. Now here is what we have. We have a very cool background, very oxidized, very layered, very interesting. I'm gonna lift some of that because I think it looks a little too dark for me. There we go. But this is going to be a very crazy background because what you see is not necessarily what you get on this. It could be. You could be, you could dry this and you could be perfectly happy with it, but you can do something really unique. And here's what I discovered. So I looked at this and I love the background. I'm like, this is beautiful. It's very soft. It would be a great background to stamp a butterfly or a flower or whatever. And then I started to touch it because I'm like, oh, it's a great glossy surface. And I noticed that when I touched it, the oxide started to lift every time I touched it. I'm like, well, that's weird because you saw what I did on that. It didn't come off my fingers on paper. Why on this? Well, because it's glossy. I'm like, hmm. So my next thing was to lick it. I'm like, I wonder, because my fingers are very inky, but I'm like, what happens if it gets wet? And I tried that. And all of a sudden I saw some color, but then it oxidized again because it oxidizes with water. And I thought, hmm, what could I use? So I got this, Distress Microglaze. Now Distress Microglaze is a product we've had in the Distress line that makes anything that's water-based waterproof. If you put Distress Oxide over oxides, permanent, waterproof. If you put them over markers, those markers are permanent. If you put them over Distress Ink, it's permanent. So if you put them over Dilutions, permanent, anything that you put on. But what's crazy is when I apply Distress Microglaze to an ink surface like this, this is an oxide surface with resist spray, and I apply it over the top, it doesn't change anything. You can't see it because it goes on very smooth, but it evaporates very quickly on regular paper. But on this paper, not so much. So the cool thing about this particular jar is it is sized for this little tool, okay? So I wanted to make sure that the jar would fit this little mini blending tool. So I've got some microglaze on there, not tons. I didn't scoop it up. I wasn't churning butter. I just twisted a little bit of that. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply microglaze to the surface. And what it's going to do is it's going to start to reveal every single layer of ink that I applied to my background. And that hazy, soft, milky background now becomes this luminous, vibrant, looking background that looks like you used encaustic wax, alcohol ink, anything like that. And now my colors are completely permanent and stable in my background. That's a new one at all. So that little background, when you looked at it and you're like, that looks like a cloudy hot mess. <laughs> maybe, maybe you liked it, but every single layer had purpose. Every time I went in, it froze that color that splash of pink, those little drips in there, everything. And this is now a permanent background. There is no texture to it. There is no oxidation to it. There is no greasy to it. It's now beautiful cardstock that normally when you try to achieve that look, you really couldn't. You couldn't with 
in caustic wax. And even when you try to do alcohol ink, you don't get really those layers underneath it. Like with alcohol ink, because it reacts the next layer, you kind of end up with everything looking pretty much the same of whatever colors you use. But here you can see when I first went in and hit the orange layer, or when I went into that last layer and added blue, everything had purpose and we had the ability to background. So if you have oxides and you played with them and you love them on tags and you love it on watercolor paper and all that, get yourself some alcohol ink cardstock and see what happens. Because for example, this I just decided to clean my whole background off, right? What if I oxidize my background, but I put a stencil down and did my microglaze only through my stencil, right? Then just that design would be bright and everything else would still be oxidized. Pretty cool, pretty fun. So let's talk about some other things that we can do with some of the new products. I just think, you know, seeing what you have and going, all I have to do is change the paper and I'm gonna go from using my oxides, which give me this look, to give me this look is ridiculous. It's so cool and I like, I like that mix. But another cool thing that people have been loving. Is Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Scrap Time videos here on YouTube so you'll be the first to see all our videos from Creativation. And follow us on Instagram at Scrap Time Photos to see photos straight off the show floor.